Hi, George here. And today we're going to be removing this background back here and changing that to a new background like that. This time though, we'll be doing this with a color select tool, which is something that they have over in Photoshop. We don't have it here under the select menu. Notice we don't have any color select in here, but you can get this tool with the Elements Plus plugin. Let me bring that up here. And our second section here is our selections section. I'll open this up. Lots of options in here, a lot of things you can do. But one of them is the select color range right there. Let's start by cleaning up our image over here, right hand side. I'm just going to select all of these layers we don't want, hit the delete key, and get us back to just the basic image right here. Now what I like to do is to make a duplicate of the background, right click where it says background, duplicate layer, choose OK. There we go, you can then hide this. That's our safety just in case things go wrong. We have our safety. Let's now come down to the effects panel. And I have Elements Plus installed right over here. It's inside of the classic section, as you can see there, artistic classic color match. Elements Plus, and the second one over here, this is the Selections section. I'll double click on that to bring that tool up. There we go. In here you can select your RGB, red, green, or blue channels. So you can select by channel if you want to. Something you can't do in the regular Photoshop elements. You can load your selection as a new selection, add to, subtract from, or intersect with. What we want over here is on the right hand side, and that's Select Color Range. Let's just double click on that. Brings up our color range tool. I'm going to set this back to its defaults, kind of like that. And then to use this tool, grab the first eyedropper, the color picker tool, come in and click into the color you want to select for, and bring your fuzziness up just a little bit. And it begins to make that selection. Now there are two things you can do at this point. You can add to your selection with the plus eyedropper here. Let's come down and add this corner right there. Okay, that dark green. Or you can bring your fuzziness up. And what you want to do is to get the background either all white or pretty close to it. There's some light grays in here. That's fine. You don't want any dark grays happening. You want to get up so there's just some light grays. And that's pretty good. You also can do a preview down here. Here's a grayscale preview. Notice how this catches those real nice wispy hairs in there. Here's our black mat. Here's a white. And quick mask. I'll put it back to none. Now what we actually want here is to select the subject and not the background. So I'll click on invert. And we now have the background selected out and the subject selected. Then just go up here, click on OK. And there's our selection of just the subject. Let's now go back to our layers and click on the layer mask button. And there's our layer mask removing that subject. Now you see a little bit of green around the edges. We'll take care of that in just a little bit here. But first notice that we're not seeing any preview over here on the layer mask. That sometimes happens in the more recent versions of Photoshop Elements. The way around that is to save your image, close it and reopen it. You'll then see that again. Let's go ahead. We'll do that right now. I'll do a file, save as, and I'll save it here instead of a projects folder. Let's just call this one color select like that. I can then close that down. We'll be using this in just a moment. Go up here to File, Open Recently Edited, and Color Select. There we go. Dock that again right there. And we're now seeing the correct thumbnail over here for the layer mask. So again, a little glitch in here in more modern versions of Photoshop Elements, but an easy fix. Close and reopen. Let's now bring a new background in here. I'll come down to the background layer. Let's go over here to the photo bin, and I have this image right here. Now an easy way to do this, I just switch back over here to this image. I'm going to grab that picture and just drag it over here and let go, and it pulls it in. Now I want it behind our subject, so I'll just drag it down. Let's hide her, and we need to resize it. It's a smaller image, but that's okay for this use. I'll use a Control T keyboard shortcut, and let's just drag our corners out until we get this large enough to fill that image area. And I'll leave some horses on the outer edge over here, so you get a little bit of that horse stuff showing. Okay, show our layer again. And there we go. Now, we're not seeing any green down along this edge over here or over here. That's because it's against a green background. So if you can give your background a similar color to what you're removing, it makes it a lot easier and a lot cleaner. Up in here, we're seeing some of that green. Now we can fix that. There are two ways to handle this. The first way is you want to sharpen up that selection. And you can do that over right here on the mask. Go to the mask side. I'm gonna zoom in just a bit here. 
There we go. We're on the mask side. And I'm going to grab the burn tool right here. Have it set for midtones. Let's bring our brush size up. That's the right square bracket. And I'm just going to brush over that edge. What that does is it sharpens up the edge. Don't do this too much. You don't want to get pixelated in there, but just a little bit can help. And it gets rid of any kind of fuzziness around that edge. So just a little bit of that. I'm going to do a little bit on the shoulders in here. The space bar down and just a little bit down through here. And that's good. Okay. Space bar again. Now for the next thing I want to do is to go over here to the image side, double click. And let's go back over here. I'll grab the sponge tool. I have it set a desaturate. And then I'm just going to paint over the image side on this. What I'm doing is I'm converting that green to gray. I'm removing the color. And in this instance, it makes it look like it's just the regular hair back there. And I'll do that for all of these areas. We'll take out that color. And that will solve that. Now, some of these things I'll want to take out because they're just a little bit weird looking. And that happens whenever you have flyaway hair. Some of the flyaway stuff is just not going to look that great. But that's part of regular photo retouching, not really part of doing our masking. But we'll fix that in just a second. And just go around the whole hair section here. And wherever you see kind of a green tint, just come in and convert that green over to a gray. And then just blends into the picture very nicely. Okay, that's looking pretty good. Well, that green is now gone. Let's just check the very top of the head up here. Okay, last thing I want to do now is just to get rid of some of these flyaways that don't look that great. Like over here, that's kind of pixelated. And right over here, that's not too great. Again, easy fix on that. Go over here to the layer mask side. Let's set our foreground color to black. And let's set this here at a brush. I'm using a small brush. And with a soft edge brush, the larger the brush, the larger the softening is. So you want just a little bit of softening, use a smaller brush. You want more softening, use a larger brush. And I'll just paint black right onto the layer mask. And I can then hide anything I'm not happy with, just like that. Just kind of clean up a little bit. I want the soft edge brush so that it comes out looking real natural. You don't want a hard edge brush at this point. That looks just kind of fake. And I'll clean up just a little bit of these things in here. And over on this side, some of the worst of this. And this takes being just a little more careful. Now I've been asked if I'm using a tablet with a stylus or if I'm using a mouse. I always use a mouse on this. I've always used a mouse. I just like it better. I've used tablets, but I prefer using a mouse. It's just a personal preference. But to get this real nice, easy control on that, what I do is I have a wrist rest that I use. I rest my hand on the wrist rest and then I move the mouse with just my fingers. So it's real fine control that way. Be real precise about that. If you try moving your mouse with your whole hand, you get much larger movements and it's much harder to control. And there we go. One last little step. She's more contrasty than the background, which makes it look a little bit pasted on. We can easily fix that. Let's go down here to the background layer. Go up to layer, come down to new adjustment layer and levels. Check that checkbox, choose okay. And in here, I'm just going to bring up my darks a little bit. That's going to richen the darks up and make it look more like the foreground. Just like that. That's all we need to do. Maybe a little bit more on the lights, but not much. If you want to find out more about Elements Plus, I have a video about that. I'll put a link for that in the description. I'm also beginning to put in articles about how to use Elements Plus in my Photoshop Elements Coach program. And that's a great tool to use when you're working with and learning how to use Photoshop Elements. It's kind of like an interactive super help system. And I'll put that link right down there in the description as well. Plus, I'll include a page for this project, which includes links to these images and also the Photoshop Elements file over here, right-hand side, and a step-by-step -step list on what I just did in this video. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit that like button. Make sure you click on subscribe. Hit that bell icon so you don't miss any future videos. And I'll see you next time.